Hi folks. Well, the weather's finally cooled down enough here in South Florida that I can open the garage door and enjoy some fresh air. Uh, it's high time. What are we, halfway through October? And the temperatures finally drop below the 80s. So in any event, I picked up a Luxman LV-105U. Now, like a lot of folks, I've been buying stuff on eBay, and I've been pretty lucky. I, I hadn't really gotten burned. I bought a lot of things that said parts only, many of which worked just fine. Ones that didn't were completely intact. Uh, so my, my luck was bound to run out sooner or later. Uh, this one was advertised parts only, and uh, left channel out, and no tubes. Now, this is an interesting design because this is a amalgam of bipolar junction transistors, vacuum tubes, and MOSFETs, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors, all in one unit. So it, it piqued my interest. I'd always want to get my hands into one of these. So it was sold as left channel not working. Well, the right channel is not working either because all of the no longer available MOSFETs had been stripped out of this unit. They're the outputs. It's kind of like buying a car advertised as brakes don't work. And true, the brakes don't work, but when you pop the hood open, the engine's missing the cylinder heads. That kind of thing. And no tubes, okay, but the board that the tubes plug into is also missing. And I'll show you how I'm going to address that. Meantime, let me uh, pause the camera here so you can get a look under the hood and see what we're dealing with. Okay, so the cover had one screw holding it. That's fine. At least I have one to uh, compare to so I can get some more screws to hold that in. Uh, like a lot of Luxmans, this one suffers heat damage. Of course, the tubes get hot in the front, but you can see where this bread rect rectifier got so hot it discolored the board. Uh, I don't know what they were doing lifting all these resistors up. They were probably trying to troubleshoot something. We'll have to see what, what area that's in. And also, this is the driver board. You can see how discolored it is. So we're going to put some heat sinks on these guys here. And um, it mounts along the front here. And let me turn it around so you can see where the tubes actually go. So the tubes go up in the front here. And Luxman should have made a perforated metal housing for these, but they use some kind of plastic. And obviously that's not gonna hold up. The connectors are very brittle due to heat. This one was broken when I got it. And uh, I've taken the front off because I needed to see where the tubes went in. And they go in the front. Just the top half of the front comes off here. Okay. And I'm going to drop the camera so you can get a better look at that. Oh, my God. Now, the tube housing is here. You can see most of it's broken off. And in here, you can see where the tubes sit in, so they show through this window on the front. You can see the glowing tubes. All right, so at least I know what the dimensions of this are. Uh, I'm going to show you a picture of what this is supposed to look like and what we're going to do about this missing board, because without that, the whole thing won't work. Um, as I said, I was able to source the missing MOSFETs, so I have four of those waiting. Uh, I got the tubes, so now we're going to talk about what I had to do to get the, uh, what we're going to do, that is, to get the tubes mounted in here. Okay, so I had decided it was high time I learned how to design PCB boards. Um, back in the day, we used to buy copper clad boards and use these dry transfers to um, put traces and components on the board. And then we'd soak the board in ferric chloride. We'd eat off all the exposed copper. And then when it was done, you'd put it under the, put it under the faucet and use some steel wool to get the dry transfer off. And you had your board. Drill out some holes, you were ready to go. Uh, things have changed a lot since those days. I had to teach myself CAD. So yesterday morning, I opened a program called Easy EDA, and I had never worked with it before. The videos that the company made were not that helpful, 
I don't know if they assumed you knew more than you did, but there were a lot of basic things I got hung up on. And I'm going to make a video just about this. But anyway, I was able to design or lay out from the service manual the tube board. The tube board is pretty simple. Um, I'll show you a picture of it here. You can see there's not a lot to it, and I figured I could do this without too much trouble. It took me most of yesterday to get this done, but I did get them designed. And once you lay out the schematic, you can then create the PCB. Now, I had to move some things around in order to get them physically where I wanted them. I didn't have an old board to use for models, so I had to measure that front panel out. And hopefully, the tubes will nestle where they're supposed to be. I'm not going to use any uh, connectors. I'm just going to wire, solder the wires directly to the board because there's so much heat, they just melt and get brittle anyway. So I did, didn't think there was any point in doing that. So it's going to be a pretty simple thing. And I sent off the boards and should get them. I'm guessing in about a week to 10 days. So we'll see what they look like when I get those. But here's the process. You lay the schematic out like this. And once you have the schematic, and I double checked it to make sure I hadn't made any errors, I did find a couple. Once you have that, you can create the PCB. Once you've created the PCB, you can auto route it and it'll put the traces where it needs to. Now it created a double sided board, which is fine. And um, once I did that, I could get a 3D view, and you can see that here. It's really cool the way that worked. Um, but anyhow, I'm going to make a video on this because there's a lot of simple things that, that trip me up and I think I'm in a unique position now being as yesterday morning I knew nothing about this by yesterday afternoon I was able to get a finished product. So that's what we're going to do about that. I'm going to order some heat sinks for the um, driver transistors. I'm going to get a new bridge rectifier and probably mount a heat sink on that. And there's a lot of capacitors that have been taken out. A lot of things have been taken out of this unit. So anyway, that's the plan. This is the preliminary. I haven't even fired it up to see if the transformer is good. And I probably should have done that before I did anything else. But I got a little ahead of myself. This looks like it's going to be an interesting project. All right, so I did fire this up. And uh, the transformer is okay. Uh, the reason I was a little concerned about that is I had read some... Um, forums online where people said that they had some that were dead apparently they had put a fuse in the primary of the transformer that would open up but there's a way to bypass that and the unit is still protected by the main power fuse uh, i think that was only mandated for sale in certain countries so in any event this thing does power up that's the good news um, i took a little further look at the driver board here and there were only two electrolytics still mounted on it. There should have been some here and here and a couple of uh, polystyrenes like these that have been removed. So I had to place a parts order and then I had to replace another parts order to get the stuff I forgot when I replaced the first order. So there's another $10 shipping and handling I'll never see again. Uh, in any event, the two that I took off of here measured uh, really, really poorly. One was absolutely terrible and the other one was even worse. So I assume that they removed all of these and uh, determined they were bad. They had removed a bunch of capacitors down here on the main board. There were five uh, fairly good sized ones here that had been removed. This bridge rectifier put out a lot of heat. These resistors were lifted. I don't know if they moved the MOSFETs from one channel to the other and blew those. Um, I think they just finally reached a point where they said this just wasn't worth it and they just sold it for parts. I really wish they would have thrown the tube board in here, but I think that uh, the one I fabricated is going to work just fine. If not, it was a good learning uh, experience to design a board 
and it was so cheap I couldn't believe it you get five boards for two dollars and shipping was seventeen dollars plus you get discounts for being a new customer so my first attempt cost me less than ten dollars and as far as I'm concerned that's a pretty cheap lesson I've had a lot of lessons in life that cost me an awful lot more money but in any event this is going to be a project and this is a really complicated design uh, I believe that they elevate the driver board up to the voltage levels of the tubes now something to bear in mind is you can use transistors that have pretty low uh, emitter collector breakdown voltages if you're elevating the emitter close to the collector so let's say you have a transistor that has an emitter collector breakdown voltage of 60 volts and you're running 160 volts to the board that's fine if you have uh, 120 volts on the emitter and 160 on the collector you're within parameters for that transistor uh, that was something I didn't realize when I was a newbie um, when I was first learning about electronics I had no idea you could do something like that so I just wanted to bring it up now anyhow folks I'm gonna publish this video we're gonna have to do this in several different steps um, I have some parts coming in the circuit board should be here Monday and I'm kind of excited about that and I hope I didn't make any mistakes or I'll be making another set of boards uh, anyhow I am going to make a video on the process of using easy EDA, EDA. Uh, it is pretty easy to use once you get the hang of it it just took me several hours to get the hang of it so I just want to show you the sticking points I encountered and as an absolute beginner I think that'll help anyone else that's just starting out. I'm by no means an expert with it, but I was able to get a board and get it ordered. So we'll see what we get. In any event, I'm going to call this video right here. As always, I thank everyone for watching, and I like giving back to the community that's given me so much. Thanks a lot, everyone.